Welcome to Math with Mrs. Bibb, week 24. This week we're going to be factoring more. Surprise, surprise. Please fill in your table of contents. We're going to be using grouping and or other methods. If you will get out your student journal pages indicated um, and use your textbook section 7.6, to help you fill in the definitions to these words, remember your textbook is located under the Information tab in Google Classroom. Then we'll go. Last week in class, we were discussing factoring. And oftentimes, you may have a greatest common factor. So as I look at one through six, I notice that every one of these do have a common factor. Let's start with number one. When I look at 2c squared minus 14c minus 36, I see that they're all divisible by two. So I'm going to divide them all by two. And please show all this work, I do expect that, I'm so sorry. c squared minus 7c minus 18. Then I'm going to use a table. I do expect to see you naming A, B, and C. It's negative 18. I'm going to make a table. I want factors of A times C. That's negative 18 in this case. That'll give me a sum of B. That's negative 7. I want a negative product so that means I'm going to multiply a negative and a positive, and I want a negative sum. So the biggest number would be a negative, 1 times negative 18, and that does not give me negative 7. Someone asked me in class today, would it be okay to stop when you find the factors that work? Absolutely. So next I would do 2 times negative 9. 2 times negative 9 is negative 7. So those are the two factors I'm going to use. I'm going to bring down my greatest common factor of 2. I'm going to put my two empty parentheses. I'm going to put my C. And then I'm going to put a positive 2 and a negative 9. And that's my answer to 2C squared minus 14C minus 36 factored. Let's do the same thing for number 2. I'm going to divide everything by 4 because 140, let me check to make sure, I'm pretty certain, 3 times 4 is 12, yes, so it is divisible by 4. All of these are divisible by 4, so I'm going to write down 4, put my empty binomial, divide each of these by 4, I'd have a squared plus 2a minus 35. A is 1 here, B is 2, C is negative 35. Make my table factors of A times C that will give me a sum of B. A times C is negative 35, sum of B is 2. So factors of negative 35 that will give me a sum of 2. One positive, one negative a positive sum, so the smaller number will be negative. That's not positive 2. Um, 2 will not go into 35. 3 will not go into 35. 4 will not go into 35. 5 will, 7 times. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. So I found my factors. Bring down your greatest common factor. Put two empty binomials. Use your middle variable, it's A this time and then put minus 5 plus 7. That's the answer to number 3. Excuse me, number 2. Number 3, I notice they're all divisible by 3, so 3 is my greatest common factor. Divide each of them by 3. A is 1, B is negative 2, C is negative 8. Then I am going to let's 
sorry about that, I was setting my timer. Then I'm going to um, make my table. A times C would be negative eight. Sum of B would be negative two. So a negative times a positive, bigger number, one times negative eight. That would give me a negative sum, but that's not it. Um, two times negative four, and that's it. So I can bring down my greatest common factor of three, put two empty binomials, use your middle variable X, put plus two and minus four. Next, all three terms are divisible by 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. Negative 2d divided by 2 is negative d. Negative 60 divided by 2 is negative 30. A is 1. B is negative 1. C is negative 30. Make my table. A times C, sum of B. A times C is negative 30. I promise at some point it's not always going to be C. I promise that. And then B is going to be negative 1. Factors of negative 30, it would be 1 times negative 30, because that would give me a negative sum, but that's not the sum I need. 2 times negative 15, that does not give me negative 1. 3 times negative 10, that does not give me negative 1. 5 times negative 6. That does give me negative 1. So my answer is going to be 2. Bring down that GCF. Put your middle variable D. Plus 5. Minus 6. That's my answer. The next one, number um, 5, has a greatest common factor of 5. S squared plus 11S plus 10. Factors of A times C, sum of B. A is 1, B is 11, C is 10. A times C is 10, B is 11. Positive product, positive sum, so 1 times 10 is 11. That's the pair that works. So 5 times middle variables S s plus 1 and s plus 10. There's the answer to number 5. Number 6, they have a common factor of 3. So take out that 3. And you can always try these and then fast forward and see if you're right. If you understand, you can definitely do that. Okay. A is 1, B is 10, C is 9. A times C, sum of B. A times C is 9, B is 10. 1 times 9 is 10. So that's the right answer. So I'm going to bring down that greatest common factor of 3. Put two empty binomials. Use the middle variable Q. Plus 1, plus 9. Moving right along, the next page. Now, looking at number seven, I do not have a common factor. 12, negative 37, and 28 do not have a common factor. Now, I am not gonna give you numbers that big. That's just way too big, but we're gonna try this problem, and I'll, I'll end up using a calculator, but I'm not gonna give you numbers this big. Since I don't have a common factor, a is 12, B is negative 37, and C is 28. We're going to use the method of grouping to do this problem. So A times C. And this time, A times C does not just give me that C value. So 12 times 28, 280 plus 56, whatever that is. 336 and I want factors of negative 37 
or sorry, I want to sum up negative 37. So that means I'm going to have a negative times a negative. Okay, I just made the entire list of factors, and I did not think I was ever going to get there. And you do not have to write that entire list of factors. But I want you to see that I finally found the pair that works, negative 16 times negative 21. Now here's what we're going to do with this. Factoring by grouping is complicated, so I want to try to take it slow. Once you have your pair that works, negative 16 and negative 21, here is what you do. You are going to keep your first term the same. And you're going to keep your last term the same. But this middle term, negative 37g, is going to be replaced with negative 16g and negative 21g. So I'm going to rewrite this trinomial and make it four terms. Let me go back. I thought I highlighted here in the middle, but I did not. Okay, so 12g squared stays the same. 28 stays the same. Negative 37g is going to be replaced with negative 16g, and it does not matter what order, and negative 21g. Oh, and that was a plus 28. Now, factoring by grouping. In mathematics, how do I do grouping? We use parentheses. So the next thing I'm going to do is group the first two together, 12g squared minus 16g. I'm going to put a plus sign, because then there always needs to be a plus sign in the middle, and group the second two together, negative 21g plus 28. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to look at each, each pair of parentheses and take out the greatest common factor, this term and this term. They are both divisible by 4, and they're both divisible by g. So I'm going to put 4g on the outside. I'm going to divide each of these by 4g. Put the answer inside the parentheses. 12 divided by 4 is 3. g squared divided by g is g. And then negative 16g divided by 4g is just negative 4. For the next one, Although both of these terms are not negative, since this first term is a negative, then I'm going to factor out a negative greatest common factor. So negative what? 7? Negative 21g divided by negative 7 is positive 3g. And then positive 28 divided by negative 7 is going to be negative 4. Now, once you get to this part, I remember learning this when I was in ninth grade, believe it or not, because that really was a long time ago. But when you get to this part, you are almost there. What you have to realize is you have successfully gotten this far because what's inside of this binomial is the same as what's inside of this binomial. So this polynomial right here, it's technically a binomial. You've got one term, let me get my little pointer. You've got one term, 4g times 3g minus 4, and you've got another term, negative 7 times 3g minus 4. They have a common factor. That common factor is 3g minus 4. So you write that down in one pair of parentheses. In the other pair of parentheses, and I'm going to scribble this out, you get rid of the 3g minus 4. What's left? 4g minus 7. That's the answer of 12g squared minus 37g plus 28 factored. 3g minus 4, 4g minus 7. Moving on to question 8. I do not have a common factor, so I'm going to name my A value, my B value, and my C value. I'm going to make my table, and again, I do expect to see this work 
and this work, and I told you all in class the reason why I expect to see this, is because PhotoMath will not give you this work right here, and I expect to see it, and you have to know how to factor without PhotoMath. You all know how I feel about that. I'm so sorry, but that's just how I feel. I want you to learn how to do it. Okay, so then I need A times C, that's 24, sum of B, that's negative 11. Positive product, negative sum, that means both of my factors will be negative. It's not that first pair. Negative 2 times negative 12, that's not that pair. How about negative 3 times negative 8? Yes, negative 3 times negative 8. Now, I don't think I pointed this out in the first one, but I'm pretty certain you all realize that the reason why I have to do this factoring by grouping is because this A value is no longer 1. So when I'm doing these types of problems, if A is not 1, I need to factor by grouping. There's a couple other ways that you can do these, but the first way I want you to understand is by grouping. So this is the first way we're doing it. Okay, so again, first term stays the same. Last term stays the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the middle term turns into these two. So let's do that. First term stays the same. Last term stays the same. Negative 11k turns into negative 3k and negative 8k. Now I am going to group. So I'm going to group the first two together. Put a plus sign. Group the last two together. I am going to take out the greatest common factor here, which would be 3k. And 6k squared divided by 3k is 2k. Negative 3k divided by positive 3k is negative 1. Remember, you need to be able to distribute 3k and get what was already there. And we, we can do that. So be careful. A lot of people would leave off this minus 1. Okay, then the next group, that first term is negative, so I'm going to take out a negative um, GCF, even though both of these are not negative, so they don't have a negative in common, but since this first number is negative, you have to take out a negative greatest common factor. If you don't, it just won't work. That's why you have to. So 8 and 4 have 4 in common. I'm going to divide both by negative 4. Negative 8k divided by negative 4 is positive 2k. Positive 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. And then, when I look at this, these are the same. Whoops. Oopsie. Can I undo? Yes. Okay, so I meant to highlight. When I look at this, these are the same. So I'm going to write down oops, 2k minus 1 was the same. In parentheses beside of it, I'm going to get rid of this and make that 3k minus 4 beside of it. So this is the answer to 6k squared minus 11k plus 4 factored. Okay, let me do the next one. I am going to name A, B, and C. I have a toolbar in the way over here on the right, so I probably have a big space there, but I, there's a toolbar there, so I have to write above it. Um, factors of A times C, which would be 18. Sum of B, which would be 9. Factors of 18, sum of 9. 1 times 18, that's 19, so that's not it. 2 times 9, that's 11, so that's not it. 3 times 6, that is 9, so that's it. Now, again, and I hope the highlighting is helping, I don't know. Fast forward if it's not, I understand, but I'm trying to do everything I can to help each of you learn. So 9w squared stays the same. 
two will stay the same, and 9w will change into 3w and 6w. Okay, 9w squared stays the same, positive 2 stays the same, 9w turns into 3w plus 6w. Now I'm going to group the first two together, and group the last two together. I don't know how to get rid of that toolbar, and it is definitely in my way. Okay. And then I'm going to, oh, I've left off my square. I'm sure you all caught that. I'm going to take out 3w, and that would leave 9w squared divided by 3w is 3w. 3w divided by 3w is positive 1. 6w plus 2 has positive 2 in common. 6w divided by 2 is 3w. 2 divided by 2 is positive 1. I'm so sorry. I, I'm right there on the edge, and I can't write. Like I said, that toolbar is right there. Positive one, and I'm sure there's a way to get rid of it. I just don't remember how. Okay, now, did it work? Yes, I have 3w plus 1 inside of here and over here. I have 3w plus 1. And I'm going to put 3w plus 1 in parentheses and get rid of this. And then I'll have 3w plus 2. And that's my answer. So this video is getting longer and longer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the next three problems. I'm going to pause the video, and then I'll bring it back so you can see the answers. So why don't you try to do them? And if you need me to help with them and go through each step, you just let me know. And I'll be happy to do that in class or during a Google Meet. Okay, so I did these problems. I moved my toolbar so I could right over here on the right hand side. I did number 10. The answer to number 10 is 4a minus 1 times 3a plus 2. The answer to number 11 is the quantity 5b minus 2 times the quantity 3b plus 4. Then the answer to number 12 is the quantity 5t minus 3 times the quantity t plus 3. Now, if you would like for me to do those three problems, during the Google Meet or in person, you just let me know and I could go through the steps of each of those. Um, if you have it, wonderful, but if you need me, if you feel a little shaky, you need me to do those, I'm happy to do those for you because there's even more notes to go. Let's see what's on the next page. There are more problems. I'm gonna say that I don't expect you to do those. Let's see, I think we'll do these during a Google Meet or in person. So I'm not going to have you do those together. I'm actually, just uh, I think I can do it, maybe. I'm going to screenshot this so I'll have it. Okay. So you do not have to do those. Let's go on to the next slide. We do want to do these. Okay. I see length, and I see width, and I see area, and I see rectangle. So remember, area equals length times width. Let's work this out and see what happens. Area equals length times width. Fill, fill in what I know. I know the area is 360. I know the length is 3x plus 5. And I know the width is 2x plus 8. I will tell you what students are tempted to do is to just set 3x plus 5 equal to 360 and 2x plus 8 equal to 360 and solve. But that is not what you do. What you do is, is you multiply this right-hand side. So I'm going to multiply that out. 3x times 2x plus 8 
and positive 5 times 2x plus 8. Distribute, that would be 6x squared. Distribute, that would be 24x. Distribute, that would be 10x. And distribute, that would be 40. At the same time that I'm combining like terms, I'm going to make this equal 0 because this is a square. This is x squared. So to solve it, remember we learned um, in the notes two weeks ago that when you're solving a quadratic, that's what that square is, it has to equal 0. So I'm going to combine like terms and make it equal 0 all at the same time. 6x squared, there's nothing to combine with that. 24x and 10x give me 34x. And then 40 minus 360 is negative 320, I believe. Now, when you're solving, not when you're factoring, but when you're solving, so please put that in your brain, we can get rid of the greatest common factor to begin with. We can do that. So as I look at this problem, they are all divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide everything by 2 and put that answer up here. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to put equal 0 on the right. Then I'm going to have 3x squared plus 17x minus 160. A is 3, B is 17, C is negative 160. A times C, sum of B. 3 times 160 is negative 480. 3 times negative 160, and then I want a sum of 17. So I am going to pause the video and find the factors. I found the factors, and the only pair of factors you need to write down is negative 15 and 32. You do not have to have all of those written down. It's perfectly fine not to have them. Now, when we did solving, we used the zero product property. But we were able to do it quickly or, or with an area model. With this problem, I can't. I can't because a is not 1. So I have to do what I was doing. I have to factor by grouping. Leave your first term the same. Leave your last term the same. Your middle term becomes negative 15x plus 32x. Then you group. Take out the greatest common factor, 3x would be the greatest common factor here. And then 32 is going to be the greatest common factor in the next one. You get x minus 5, and it factors into x minus 5, that's what they have in common, and 3x plus 32. Now I'm going to do the zero product property up here. I hope you have space. Hopefully you didn't have to write as big as I did. Okay, so set each factor equal to zero and solve. Add 5. Subtract 32. 3x equals negative 32. Divide by 3 x equals negative 32 thirds. Now hopefully you realize that you can get rid of this negative one because we're talking about length and width of a rectangle and we can't have a negative measurement. So now I'm going to find the length and width. I have 3x plus 5 is my length. I'm going to substitute 5 in for um, the x. So I'm going to have 15 plus 5. So 20 is my length. And for my width, I'm so sorry, I'm squeezing this in here. The width is, uh, let me see, 2x plus 8. I'm going to substitute. 5 in for x, so 
So 10 plus 8, 18 is the width. 20 by 18. Now let's look at the next problem. The sum of two numbers is 8. The sum of the squares of the two numbers is 34. I decided that that last question, I can't see what number it says it is, the one that says the sum of two numbers is 8, is too difficult for us to do. That's just a lot of information to understand. I used the first sentence to write this right here. That's what I used the first sentence for. If you have x as the first number, then the second number would be 8 minus x. And then I use the second sentence to write my equation. x squared plus 8 minus x squared equals 34. Then I simplify this, continue to simplify, and I ended up with this quadratic. I do not expect you to do that one. You do not have to write it down. You can just look at it. Really, my most advanced students would be able to do it, but it's okay if you don't understand. So you're just welcome to, to continue and fast forward through this. But if you want to pause and look at it, I divided by 2 to get rid of the common factor. I factored the um, trinomial I had there. I came up with the two answers, x equals 3 and x equals 5. Those are the two numbers, x equals 3 and x equals 5. 3 and 5 are the two numbers that you can add together to get 8 and then square them and add that, each of those squares together and get 34. Let's go on to the next page. Here it says to write these two examples in the space under the notes on Student Journal page 231. So we're going to do these um, couple problems. We are going to solve by factoring. So the first thing I'm going to do is make it equal 0. To solve by factoring, you have to make it equal 0. I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. 10x squared minus 5x minus 15 equals 0. To solve by factoring, I can just divide away the common factor. I don't have to keep it. I can divide it away. So when I'm solving, I can get rid of the common factor. These three terms all have 5 in common. So I can divide the entire polynomial by 5. And then I'm going to solve by factoring. A is 2. B is negative 1. C is negative 3. I need factors of A times C. that will give me a sum of B. Factors of negative 6. That will give me a sum of negative 1. 1 times negative 6 would give me negative 5. 2 times negative 3 would give me negative 1. I cannot go and do this. Do you recognize why I cannot do that? I cannot do that because A is not 1. I have to factor by grouping. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to factor by grouping. That's where you keep your first term the same, 2x squared remains the same, minus 3 remains the same, negative 1x is replaced with positive 2x minus 3x. I'm going to group the first two together, put a plus sign, group the last two together, going to factor out the greatest common factor. 2x is the greatest common factor in the first group. x plus 1 is left when you factor out 2x. Negative 3 is the greatest common factor in the second group. x plus 1. It did work because those binomials are the same. So I get x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. Do the zero product property, x plus 1 equals 0, 2x minus 3 equals 0, x is going to equal negative 1, 2x equals 3, 
x will equal 3 over 2. So negative 1 and 3 over 2. Those are my two answers. Negative 1 and 3 halves. Now we're going to do this one. I'm going to make it equal 0. I'm going to add 8x to both sides. 16x squared plus 8x equals 0. I am going to take out the or divide away the greatest common factor. Oh, I shouldn't have said that on number one because I cannot divide away the x. The numeric common factor I can, but I'm not going to. So what they have in common is 8x. I have to keep that x, so I should not have said that earlier. A numeric factor you may get rid of. A variable factor you may not. 16x squared divided by 8x is 2x. 8x divided by 8x is 1. Set each factor equal to 0. So x equals 0. x equals negative 1 half. Those are my two answers. Negative 1 half and 0. And I apologize for how long this is. I hope you have a wonderful day.